Hi, welcome to the World's Sturdiest Workshop, and I want to talk to you today about the old Dremel Sawmax. No, it's not a new product, it's been around for a few years, and has recently been upgraded to an Ultra Saw, which has a bigger blade. Uh, be very careful, the Ultra Saw blades don't fit the Sawmax. So, uh, why would you want this tool? One, because it's smaller and more handy, uh, more maneuverable, and uh, you can still get the blades online at Amazon. So a cheap tool that you could buy used with fairly inexpensive blades that are still available today. This is my Dremel Sawmax. As of the year 2022, I can still order uh, various sawing blades for my Sawmax. Uh, I can order them on Amazon and they come in the mail in a couple of days. There is now something called an Ultra Saw. Uh, it is a slightly bigger saw. It's about three and a quarter, I believe, on the blades. The blades for the Ultra Saw don't fit the Sawmax. Um, they're just too big. So when you're out there shopping uh, at the home store, be careful not to buy the blades for the Ultra Saw if you have a Sawmax, because you'll wind up returning them to the store. I'm learning to wear uh, rubber gloves at the very least when working with my tools because I, uh, I cut myself less, I have a lot fewer splinters, and uh, it protects my hands to a certain degree from the small abrasions and things that happen when I'm using my tools. That's without the trigger lock, and that's with the trigger lock. So you can see that there is a safety mechanism here, but the problem is, is it's so easy to hit that you can accidentally trigger the unit while it's plugged in. Just be aware of that. A quick demonstration of the safety lock. I can't squeeze the trigger, but if I move this forward, I can now trigger the saw. A quick demo of uh, the tool lock in the back here. Uh, first, uh, release the safety, squeeze the trigger, and then press the lock back near the cord. And I've just unlocked the tool. So that's the tool lock working there. The tool is now locked. I can't release there. And I've just unlocked the tool. So that's the tool lock working there. There's a button on the back of the unit to lock the trigger into the on position. You can see that that is on. When you're sawing a larger panel like this, make sure you have a stand for the panel that's going to fall and a stand for the piece you want to keep. I want to keep both these pieces, so I don't want this to hit the ground. Uh, I'm wearing safety goggles and protective gloves. Uh, I have a fence set up here with some clamps. There is a small distance here, about, uh, oh, I'd say about a half an inch here. There is a, uh, a notch here uh, that represents where the blade is going to be. So at the top of uh, the tool here, there's a little cutout. And that cutout tells you where the blade's going to go. I'm checking the cutout right now, and that blade's going to be uh, right in the middle of that cutout. I'm going to check the cutout to make sure that it's on my line. And where my fence is... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the other side and check it real quick one last time just to get a visual so that's going to work. I'm going to be able to cut that piece all the way through without an issue using my fence and it should be nice and square.
That's awesome. I love that tool. This is a really great tool. It's super handy. Um, I find uh, a full size circular saw to be very unwieldy. Um, yeah, uh, it's better for a fence if you have a full size saw. Um, this can be used with a small fence and you can get a very straight cut. But if you have to make an uneven cut or a curvy cut, this is a really cool tool to have. Especially if you're working out small pieces, trying to uh, trim out uh, larger shapes. Um, really handy, very quick, very safe. I really enjoy this tool. I recently burned up my wood cutting blade. You can see here that the abrasive part of the blade is absolutely missing. Um, this is what a wood cutting blade looks like. It doesn't have teeth on it like an ordinary saw blade that you're used to. It has a lot of abrasive surface on it around the edge of the blade. It works very well. But when it starts to burn your wood and not cut so well, then it's time to swap the blade out. They don't last forever, but they last long enough. Here are the masonry abrasive blades for my Sawmax. Here's a wooden plastic blade, which I'm going to be using sometime soon. And there's also something called a tile blade, which also works. Here's a tile blade. I haven't removed it from the package yet. Swapping out blades is quite easy. All you need is a 10 millimeter socket. There is a locking button on the top of the unit to lock the blade into place. Spin the socket wrench around in the opposite direction that you're used to for loosening bolts and the blade pops right off. There's a bolt and a washer and here's the blade. To install a new blade, just put the blade into place, install the washer, put the bolt in in the opposite direction that you're used to while holding down the locking button. When you're done, lock the blade into place by simply turning the socket in the opposite direction while pressing the button. I have since lost the lever here to adjust uh, the bed angle. Um, it's kind of cheap, but uh, I really don't need it. If I need to adjust this angle, I'm going to use a wrench anyway. Uh, that lever just kind of gets in the way. Uh, there is an angle uh, position indicator here. So there is an angle position indicator on the side here. Um, I don't use it that much. Uh, really, um, the angle of the bed is really more for blade height than anything. If I want to adjust the blade height, all I do is go for the angle adjuster, loosen it. It's actually backwards from what you're used to. You can see there that I can change the height of the bed. Oh, wow. Okay. You can see here with the bolt loose enough I can change the height of the bed to give me a, a, a different height on the blade. So this is an angle adjuster, this is a blade height adjuster. So once I get that blade uh, to the right depth, I'm going to be cutting uh, about a quarter inch piece of plywood. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lock down that side bolt. Now strangely, again, that's a reverse bolt. So I'm not going to really tighten that down tight. I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on that and lock that bed into place. So remember, there's a, there's a handle here, but it's better with a wrench and a handle removed. It just gets in the way. Before using my saw max every day, I just make sure that the blade is nice and tight. That way I don't accidentally wind up stripping out the center post here. And um, <clears throat> always work with it unplugged um, because it's just very easy to hit the trigger. There is a trigger lock here, but uh, if you accidentally squeeze it here, uh, that trigger lock's not going to do any good. You're going to turn on the unit while you're working on it. When I had my new garage door installed, my garage door technician did a very poor job of hanging the garage door opener. So I used my Dremel saw to cut the steel brackets necessary to build this super duty mount for my garage door opener. The Dremel tool is awesome. The Dremel Solmax is very simple and I really enjoy it.
I want to thank everybody for watching the World's Dirtiest Workshop, and I hope you enjoy your Saw Max from Dremel.